All right, what's up everybody? It's time to test FST beta. And here's what I'm gonna do. I got this random address generator. I'm gonna generate some random addresses in San Francisco. And we're gonna see um, how it does. Take me to 27 Escondido Avenue, San Francisco, California. All right. So there's a random address that I just gave it. I've never been to this address before. And we're gonna go there and uh, see how the software does. So let's turn it on FSD. And off we go. So this is really the user experience of the future. Instead of having to actually drive places yourself, you just tap where you want to go on the software or just say where you want to go and the car just takes you there with AI. So this is going to quickly become, within the next couple of years, how people do 90 to 95 percent of their driving. Maybe, you know, five to ten percent of the time they'll want to take control themselves and this they'll still have the option to for now, but 90 to 95 percent of the time they'll just let the software handle driving because most of the driving people actually have to do is pretty boring, sitting in bumper to bumper traffic, not really the sort of passionate scenes you see on car commercials, right? When or, or what people are really thinking of when they say, oh, I love to drive. Nobody loves to drive in traffic. They love to drive on an you know, open road with beautiful hills and you know, on a, on a sunny day maybe. Um, but, but most of the driving people do is actually not that fun. It's very much just trying to accomplish a purpose of getting somewhere. And already today, a lot of people don't realize how advanced the Tesla software's actually gotten. Already today, it can do a lot of these drives for you. I can give it a random address, and I can be fairly confident that it's going to be able to drive there even though San Francisco's crazy, there's tons of adversarial situations, weird streets, even this, I mean, what kind of weird street is this? But it's able to handle pretty much anything you throw at it these days. Not everything, but the vast majority of situations you're gonna encounter in the real world, even in a dense urban environment like San Francisco. I remember it was one of the shareholder meetings or something long ago, uh, 2019, 2018 maybe, where Elon was talking about FSD and someone said, well, is it even going to work in a place like San Francisco? And Elon said, yeah, it'll even work in San Francisco. And, you know, I'm a huge autopilot fan, but even I had a hard time believing him. I was like, no way it's really going to work very well in San Francisco. I mean, I can't even imagine it making, uh, you know, turns and handling that kind of stuff with uh, a more suburban environment like the South Bay. How is it going to be able to handle something like San Francisco? But here we are in 2023, and it can do just that. It can handle San Francisco roads, and it can drive them just like a human. And it can do it using just computer vision, no HD maps. You saw a Waymo car there with a bunch of LiDAR, it's using HD maps. This Tesla doesn't require any of that. Um, so it's an incredible breakthrough in scalability and really getting this technology into everybody's hands in a form that they can actually use and that can start, pre start preventing crashes. A lot of people don't realize that autonomy is no longer a question. Autonomy has basically been proven solvable right like there are tons of driverless cars driving around San Francisco we may even see some during this drive I'll point it out if I see a car without a driver but there are actual cars without drivers driving around in San Francisco so the amount of progress the industry has made 
really can't be overstated. We've gone from this being a science fiction type situation where it's like, okay, can we do autonomy? Is autonomy possible? To a world where any ordinary person can go to Arizona and take a driverless ride, no invite needed. Here in San Francisco, if you have an invite, you can try a driverless cruise or Waymo, uh, which are the special built cars that use LiDAR and HD maps. And as you can see here, even the AI that's in ordinary cars that you can buy and take home, like a Tesla, are now getting to the place where they can complete a lot of these drives on their own. And looking at the evolution of the software, it just seems completely inevitable that they're going to get it to a place where it surpasses uh, human ability. And I mean, this shouldn't really be surprising. I mean, we're seeing a general trend in the economy where pretty much any economically valuable work, AI and software is surpassing human level performance. So this is a major sort of economic shift we have to contend with on multiple levels, but it's very much happening in driving too. And it takes a lot of time. The real world is incredibly diverse and filled with a very, very long tail of edge cases. So yeah, it's going to take time to go through all of these and make sure the software is completely robust against everything that can, uh, that can happen. But you just sort of look at the, the trend line right and human level performance on driving is flat uh, the number of fatalities in recent years here in the United States has actually been going up so human performance is actually flat to declining especially with how hooked people are getting into their smartphones that's a big reason why people have actually been crashing more and dying more so the human level performance it's not improving. And, you know, some people say, well, we should redesign our roads to be safer and add these features to the car. That's great. Um, you know, you can definitely improve safety that way, but generally humans are pretty flat. And, you know, you can't really expect everyone to invest in, you know, implementing safer roads or people to get, you know, um, a brand new car. That's, that has, uh, you know, these higher end packages or whatever. So really, this is going to be really key. Having autonomy and actually making it simple enough that it can run with just a few cameras attached on the car, uh, an FSD computer, and it doesn't really need a ton of expensive equipment to do what it needs to do. The latest Tesla cars can run this FSD software without even radar, without even ultrasonics, just pure vision. So it's incredibly easy to add onto pretty much any other EV or any other car and add this functionality to the car. Um, and there's millions of Tesla cars that are out on the road today that can already run this. And they just keep pushing out updates and making it drive better and better. So. As the software improves, as it starts to exceed humans in every way, more and more people are going to be using it, and you're just going to have millions of these robot drivers on the road overnight, starting, you know, this year as the software expands. A lot of people don't realize how, how fast this is happening. It's already happening, and our roads are transforming fast. The number of robot drivers is growing at a much faster rate than the number of human drivers. And it's inevitable that there will actually be more robot drivers on the road than human drivers. So this is a pretty profound economic change and it's definitely a watershed moment in the history of the microprocessor and portability for computers, right? If you think about where we've been on the arc of portability, we started in the mainframe, right? You had to have basically a whole room full of computers when computers first came to the market. That wasn't very portable. 
So you had to have really a timeshare operating system to allow multiple people to use the computer. And then, of course, we had the personal computer. That was a big step forward in portability because you could actually put it on your desk, you could actually take it around. But it wasn't that portable, it was still stuck on the desk. So then we really got the laptop form factor and the laptop obviously much easier to throw in your backpack. But that wasn't good enough. We got mobile phones and tablets and now the smartphone is actually the number one computer people use because it was so portable. You can put it in your pocket and just take it with you wherever you go. So and you know even further than that we got watches people would just strap a computer onto them and you know take it with them literally every place they went. So you know what's the next step after that is really now the computers are climbing out of our pockets or off our wrists and learning to walk around in the real world without us. Oh. <laughs> that was interesting how it was making a right turn, saw those people there, went a little wider and then there was an oncoming car and adjusted. So you can see how it's, you know, making these really complex maneuvers, even with just computer vision, it's able to do that and measure everything just right. Um, even in those very close situations where, it, you know, it's uh, really kind of threading the needle in terms of uh, avoiding all these different obstacles. It's, you know, extremely impressive, honestly. I never imagined computer vision could do this. So, so far I don't think I've had to give any input to the system. It's been driving completely on its own. And this isn't even the latest update. They'll probably release 11.4 and make this version obsolete. Um, and I'll just download the update and the car will just start driving much better. Okay, looks like we got a lot of uh, construction equipment here. Lane's a little blocked, so it's slowed down. It thought about getting out of the lane, but there were a lot of cars coming. And it looks like now we're merging back in. So that was a good handling of a construction environment. Not perfect, but good. So yeah, I think, you know, this is something that people are gonna want. It completely changes the experience of what it is to even have a car, right? It's almost not even fair to call it a car because it becomes such a different product. It's not this thing you have to drive, but it's actually this computer that can take you places. And all you have to do is just say what you want and boom, there you are. It's a really kind of fun experience and it's got this great sound system. It's got this display, you can watch movies. Everybody's gonna want one of these things and honestly if you don't have one go order one if you have one try the FSD beta if it's available in your region um, I mean the, pro the way the prices are now It's extremely affordable It's really kind of if you look at the long term per mile total cost of ownership It's actually more affordable 
or similar to a Toyota Camry or a, a Corolla. And that's kind of surprising. A lot of people think, oh, well, Tesla is really expensive. But you can get the $7,500 tax credit. You can get state incentives. You can get utility incentives. And then, of course, you save because you don't have to buy gas. And electric cars require much less maintenance, no fuel changes or anything like that. So here we are. I generated a completely random address from the random address generator. And it took us there. I didn't have to give any input. So get a Tesla with full self-driving. It's pretty good. Help train the system, make it better. I really do believe that uh, this car with the right software can become autonomous and that's what Tesla's doing. So go check out the, uh, the Tesla, great deals on a Tesla right now. Get one with the full self-driving and try it out in your area. It works anywhere in uh, US or Canada right now. And uh, you know, Tesla stock also pretty cheap uh, relative to before. So not financial advice, but maybe you wanna pick some of that up. I think if you just look at the unit economics of Tesla's sort of autonomous software compared to the others, autonomy is happening and Tesla's in a better position to make money from it than any other company that's out there. So, um, really impressed with Tesla FSD. Great job to the Tesla AI team and super excited for 11.4 and all the other updates out there. If you're seeing good things with FSD or you're seeing it not work in your area, share your comments online. I love seeing comments from people all over the country sharing their experiences with FSD, whether it's good or bad, things that went well, things they'd like to see improved and just helping to get the software to the point where it can save potentially a million lives a year around the globe. 